Hello you cool cats, and this is Mina with another episode of Stein's Gate. In the last episode, I ended it by saying that I was feeling pretty nauseous about Moika. I am almost 100% certain that Moika is going to be here, like, bright and early, first thing. Like, she is going to be here in this episode. There's no way she is not going to pester me immediately. And if she doesn't pester me immediately then I'm going to be super really concerned faced because that means something's even more scary that's going to happen. I don't know what. Uh, so I'm expecting here, here, like if she shows up today and she's normal or whatever, then fine. If she does not show up, I'm going to be nervous. That's all I'm going to say because I feel pretty frightened. Anyways, <clears throat> dawn breaks. We stayed up all night again. Fighting drowsiness, I refill my mug with instant coffee. I've already lost count of how many I've had. Wakabe. Wakabe. Kurisu hands her mug to me without looking away from the computer. I guess she expects me to refill it. Since when did I become her maid? She should ask Mayuri for stuff like this. Mayuri is a professional maid, after all. That said, Chris is the one reading Saren's documents right now. Dara and I can manage if we use translation software, but we're nowhere near as efficient as she is. Well, it's not exactly what I had in mind when I said I wanted to borrow her knowledge. It just goes to show that I was right to make her a lab mem. She's an asset to the lab. For now, at least, I should try to not upset her. I silently take the mug from Kurisu, dump in the powdered coffee, and pour in hot water from the pot. It's not like it's that hard. Just do it. <laughs> Two packets of sugar, no milk. Kurisu has already requested it the same way five times today. I mix it well and bring it over to Kurisu. She doesn't immediately realize I'm standing behind her, so I hold the mug in front of her face. Kurisu takes it without turning. Thanks. Her eyes never leave the screen. She's completely absorbed in Saren's research. Even though she was adamant when she called them traitors to scientists everywhere. She's not above picking their brains. But I understand how she feels. I'm itching to know more myself. Daru is fast asleep on the sofa. His snoring is quite loud. Furthermore, it sounds like he has sleep apnea. I'm surprised Kurisu has been able to ignore it. Is she just that focused? But Mayuri is over here, right? Somewhere? I decide to watch some TV. As always, the news channels are all covering the Radicon satellite crash. Five days have passed since the satellite crash, and with the start of summer vacation season, crowds are gathering to get a glimpse of the satellite, which still has not been removed. I came from Nagoya. I wanted to see it. I drove all the way from Saitama. It's amazing. Where did this that where did that thing come from? Yay! I'm from high I'm a high school girl from Chiba. Tourists from all over Japan are flocking to this location. In an interview earlier today, Michael Byrne, spokesman for NASA, stated, that no satellite had crashed in Japan, and that the crashed object was, in fact, not even a satellite. Part-time warrior. I'm also pretty convinced that this, um, this chick is, like, a time traveler or an alien. I don't know which. I'm so hungry. I had to skip breakfast again today. I don't have much money on hand. Are there any good places to find insects or weeds around here. I can get by using my survival skills if I have to. What kind of childhood do you have? You eat insects hardcore. Uh, 
I don't know which one of these to pick. I'm going to go with this one. I'm going to go with that one. It's scent. The satellite is currently under police investigation. No date for a removal has been set. Is it really under investigation? This could be another plot by the organization. Should I say good afternoon? The door unlocks from outside and Mary comes in. Oh, I thought she was already inside and he was complaining that Kurisu should tell her to get the, the drink out. Oh, never mind. I don't know. <laughs> she has a convenience store bag in her hand. There are various food items inside, but it doesn't look like they're for us. Oh, the air in here is so thick. The three of us probably look pretty haggard since we stayed up all night. But it's hard to put on a bright smile now that I know about Saren. I'll refresh the air. Mayuri opens the window wide. The sky is so blue it hurts my eyes. Large clouds listless, listlessly drift on the wind. It truly is a refreshing sight. Mayuri's appearance makes Daru get up with a grimace. Kristo also finally moves away from the computer, sipping her hot coffee while rubbing her eyes. I glance at the clock and then go to the center of the room and call for attention. Since all lab mems are present and accounted for, this is the perfect opportunity to hold another round table conference. Round table conference? What's that? A meeting of a meeting of lab mems. Have we ever done that before? Do you even have a round table? Not physically, however, it exists in the heart of all lab mems. Am I mistaken? Yes, you're mistaken. Don't go sticking things in people's hearts. Is there one in Mayushi too? Of course there is. Oh, that's good. But what's a round table? And why a round table? You King Arthur? I'm only a temporary lab man anyway. These people whine about every little thing. Anyway, it's a round table conference. Mayuri was in here last night, so first, let's explain the situation to her. Anyway, it's a round table conference. Mayuri was in here last night, so first, let's explain the situation to her. I tell Mayuri about everything we discovered in her absence. About how Saren is making a time machine. About Jellymen. About how men in black might be coming to erase us for what we know. I told you you shouldn't do bad things. <laughs> bad, you say? We are bad. Absurd. If we're bad, then Saren is even worse. They aren't satisfied with ruling the world, now they want to get their hands on space-time itself! I agree. For some reason, Kurisu backs me up. We 
What Saren is doing is unforgivable. They're traitors to humanity, to society, and to science. I guess. She doesn't sound convinced. I didn't want to get Magyarty involved, but she's surprisingly perceptive. She'd find out even if we kept it a secret, so it's better to just tell her. Would she really, though? I mean, Mayuri is so sweet and precious. She just needs to be protected. You know? She's she's too precious and must be protected. Anyway, Ragnarok can no longer be averted. The final battle with Saren is near. A large part of me is still afraid, but we've come too far to back turn back now. We can't unlearn what we know. Rock in the rock. Norse mythology again. Christina, I ordered you to investigate CERN. What have you learned? I don't remember being ordered, but whatever. There are two problems CERN faces with time travel. First is the electron injection device known as a lifter. Unless they get it to function properly, they can't make the care black hole singularities naked. If you send a test subject through the singularity in its current state, the supergravity compresses them to a micro level. Naturally, there's no way to survive. The second problem is that they can't specify a physical destination. They can't choose where they end up after traveling to the past. That's why I'd say that the 14 found jellymen were the lucky ones. Over a hundred human experiments have been performed since 2001. The remaining 80 or so people ended up somewhere they can't be found. Why can't they be found? Why can't they be found? <laughs> Didn't you know, Mayushi? The world is constantly moving. Its rotational speed is 1,500... Okay, he's basically repeating everything Christina told him. Dari's tone is authoritative, but he's just relaying what he heard from Kurisu last night. Kilometers per hour, blah 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 blah. <laughs> Saren has been looking for solutions, but it's not going well. So even Saren is having difficulties? Now then, have you learned anything that could help us complete the phone wave name subject to change? Hmm. Chris stares at the ceiling in thought. Well, I suppose you could call the LHC the world's largest microwave oven. Of course! In other words, the phone wave name subject to change is a miniature LHC. You might be onto something there. I was sure she'd deny it. In fact, I thought she'd yell at me. But instead, she agreed with me. It throws me off a little. However, there are too many things we don't know about the phone wave. Why do the same phenomena that occur in CERN's time machine also occur in that tiny little microwave? LHC 
Unlike the LHC, this thing wasn't made for time travel. It was made to warm Mayushi's chicken! Well, yeah. Since the Jelly Man phenomenon occurs with the phone wave name subject to change, Mayuri's bananas must be reaching the Care Black Hole's ring singularity. It makes a black hole here? It won't suck us in, will it? If it sucked us in, we'd become jellymen too. But we still haven't figured out the electric discharge phenomenon, or the conditions required to cause it. During our experiments earlier, we were only able to send emails to the past during the discharge. Although it hasn't happened again, that discharge phenomenon could very well signify the injection of charge, that is, electrons. And only when that, when it occurs, does the path to the singularity open. We don't know the cause of the discharge phenomenon. That's what we need to find out. In the first place, the emails we're sending to the past are digital data, not physical objects. That's a definite difference from Saren's time machine. No, we're doing the same thing. Who's to say that digital data can't go through a singularity? I would think it would be easier than sending something human-sized. Well, I suppose that's true. You know, the way you guys talk about email? It makes me think of folding a letter into a paper airplane and making it go zoom, you know? It's more like a beam of light, like optical digital data. By the way, it's a pain to keep saying email sent to the past. Let's give it a proper name. I've got a bad feeling about this. What's that supposed to mean? You dare mock Kyo and Kyoma? You just want to give it some oddball name, don't you? <laughs> How rude! Heed me! I shall name the phenomenon of email sent to the past as follows. The name shall be... Nostalgia Drive! <laughs> Nostalgia Drive! Confusing. Rejected. He always used Kisama, which is like, it is not used. Like, you don't, like, only anime uses that. The fact that he uses it's really silly. Why you? Who gave you the authority to reject my ideas? You're just an assistant. Then why don't we give it a, Then why don't we take a vote? All in favor of Nostalgia Drive. My hand shoots up in the air. But nobody follows suit. Have you forsaken me, Daru Mayuri? 
Chris Chan's right. It's too hard for Mayushi to remember. It's way too chuny, man. Traitors! Fine. Let's hear alternatives. Don't tell me you rejected my idea without having any bright ideas of your own. やっぱり分かりやすさ重視にすべきだと思う。時間を遡っているメールなんだから、そこをメールでいいんじゃない？ I think it needs to be something easy to understand. It's an email that regresses through time. So what about retro mail? What does retro mean? Mayuri is busy eating a strawberry jelly. The strawberry jelly <laughs> donuts are. <laughs> I can't do it. These <laughs> donuts are delicious. Ah, oh, how could she eat that stuff after hearing about Jellyman? <laughs>。わかりやすい名前をつけるべきと言っておきながら、ちっとも分かりやすくないではないか。Sounds like you have your answer, Christina. You said it should be easy to understand, but it wasn't easy to understand at all, was it? So, so but, but that's because Mayuri-san is... <laughs> that's right! She's precious. Never mind. <sighs> Were you about to say because Mayuri's dumb? No! Eh, Chris chan, do you think Mayushi's dumb? I don't! I promise I don't, okay? If you cook them right, they can taste surprisingly good. Guess that's the end of that conversation. Somehow, Kurisu manages to glare at me even while soothing Mayuri. I vote the male who leapt through time! That's too stiff. It's hard to say. It's better than your nostalgia list just expialidocious nonsense and mine makes a movie title reference that's not cool it needs to be cool you're rejecting it for that Mayushi has an idea. How about back to the mail? I took a movie title and changed a word to mail. Mayushi, I already did the movie joke, Mayushi. Besides, I think the meaning is a little off. She probably meant mail to the future, but our emails go to the past. <laughs> it's not about the meaning. I took a movie title and changed a word to mail. Either way, it's too long. Then how about DeLorean mail? That doesn't even say what kind of mail it is. Hey, we don't have time for this nonsense. Let's just abbreviate it to D-mail and move on. But that's boring. 
味気なかろうが味気があろうがどうでもいい。I don't care if it's boring. Shot down. Kristen's influence in the lab seems to have grown significantly these past few days. Dmail it is! I like it. I like it. D comes before E, and it's so it's kind of like, you know, a regression of it, even if you don't use the whole DeLorean mail part. Mayuri, finished with her jelly, proclaims in satisfaction. Wait, when did Mayuri become the moderator? So why does the D-mail phenomenon occur? Because the path through the ring singularity is open. We've been over this already. By the way, didn't we have like the window wide open? She could be listening to us. We don't know if there's actually a black hole at work here. It could be an entirely different phenomenon that just happens to resemble Saren's experiments. It's dangerous to jump to conclusions. Why so timid? Don't you want our time travel, travel experiments to succeed? That's why we put our lives on the line to hack Saren. What we need to figure out is how to turn the phone wave name subject to change into a usable time machine. Do you really think that's possible? There is no think, only do. What? Did you read that off a motivational poster? You're like the classic incompetent boss. Damn you! You dare insult the insane mad scientist Yo and Kyoma! Well, it's not like Okarin is the boss anyway. Indeed, I am the symbol of this lab, not the boss. Yeah, the microwave is a little too small to even begin to be a time machine. I don't know what you mean by symbol, but how do you plan to turn the phone wave into a time machine? Let's have details. So that thing that crashed into Radikan, that satellite looking thing, are we going to take that thing? Like what is the, like it's been brought up so many times. Is that thing like an actual time machine that somehow crashed into, like, because they said that it wasn't a satellite by NASA. So is that thing like an, like a giant time machine? Is that what it is? I don't know. I don't even feel like if that's right, I, I called that thing early enough to even be proud of that. <laughs> My plan. My plan. All right, there is one thing. We've been thinking that the electrical discharge happens at random, but I have a hypothesis. Which is... I look at my watch. It's past noon. Recall the conditions when it occurred, Christina. We experimented through the night through the night with no results, but there's one variable we overlooked. The simplest, most definitive variable of all. That is, the time of the occurrence. Uh -huh. 
I checked the times of the two previous occurrences. When I accidentally sent the first email to Daru's phone, it happened between noon and 1 p.m. The second time, when all four of us observed the D-mail, it was 6 p.m. So if we perform the experiment within that time frame, we might be able to reproduce the effect. Let's try it right now. Karisu bolts to the into the development room, suddenly bursting with enthusiasm. Well, I'm glad to see she has her priorities straight. Mayushi's banana supply is getting low. Gotta buy more. Only one banana remains untouched. We got rid of the jellified bananas and then we ate the rest. Sorry, Mayuri-san. I'll go buy you some new bananas later. I'm so glad she does that. That's so nice. Really? Yay! Okane and Daruku eat my bananas, but they never buy new ones. I'll be sure to amend that in the future. You better. A bunch of bananas is a small price to pay in order to bring chaos into the world. Kurisu picks up the last banana off the stem, leans under the table, and places it inside the microwave. First, let's see if it'll become a jellyman. Ah! She tries to get up and gloriously blanks her head underneath the table. Trying for the clumsy girl appeal? It was an accident! Krisu gets up, blushing in embarrassment with tears in her eyes. Put the microwave somewhere else! It's dangerous and hard to reach like this! It'll punch through the floor if we put it on the table. Chan, Chris Chan, pain, pain, go away. Mayuri packs the back of Kurisu's head, then sweeps her hand through the air. Thanks, Mayuri san. Thanks, Mayuri san. Chrisu pulls herself together, types on her phone, and activates the phone wave, name subject to change. The banana inside the microwave slowly begins to spin backwards as the timer counts down. Krisu, who is peering into the microwave, suddenly shouts in surprise. The banana has vanished. At the exact moment, the banana reappears on its stem, jellified. Ooh. Whoa! It became a Gilbana! <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> We need to give an award to the Japanese man who voiced Rintaro. <laughs> Just as I suspected, the critical variable was time! I was a little anxious about the result, but it all worked out. I outwitted the impertinent genius girl. Now my position as the symbol of the lab is secure. Oh, way to go, Okabe. It was so simple. I didn't notice it. Kursu says with a slightly sulky expression. <laughs> your praise does you credit, Christina, but I know that you're frustrated you didn't think of it first. <laughs> Anyway, let's see if we can send another D-mail. Krista ignores my proud laughter and excitedly starts typing out a mail. Gah, 
I feel like my authority has been on the decline since that girl showed up. <laughs> it's cool, man. You never had any to begin with. Help me, you two. Okabe, I'm sending an email to your phone. When did I become her assistant? I grind my teeth in frustration, but I do as I'm told and insert my phone into the phone wave named subject to change. Z changes slot. What are you gonna send, Chris-chan? Mayuri presses up against Kurisu and sneaks a peek at Kurisu's phone. It doesn't matter what it says. What matters is whether we can send it or not. Let me see. Okabe is an airhead. Wait, you there, assistant. What are you typing? You'll see. Ready? I'm sending it. Dara's already set the microwave's timer through the X68000. There's nothing inside, but the microwave still operates. The countdown starts from 120. This is where the timing counts. We know that we have to open the microwave door during the operation, but we still don't know when to send the mail. For now, we'll do them simultaneously. Kurusu readies her finger on the phone send button. I grasp the microwave door handle. Mayuri seeks cover. Starting the countdown! The microwave timer soon indicates 70. Three, two, one, zero. Grisu presses send, and at nearly the same instant, I open the microwave door. It's working! It's working, you guys! Lightning crackles in the air. The cushion underneath the phone wave named subject to change collapses under the weight. The floor starts creaking. It's exactly like the discharge phenomenon that occurred before. The discharge lasts for about 10 seconds. After it subsides, we stare at the phone wave named subject to change with bated breath. Luckily, it didn't break through the floor. <laughs> Did it arrive? I disconnect my phone from the phone wave name subject to change and check my mail. Chris stands beside me and peers at the screen. There's an email there, two of them even, and they're written in English. The timestamps are from five days ago. Chris starts laughing when she sees the mail, even though she's the one who wrote it. The Okabe on the first one is obviously my name. But what does airhead in the second one mean? My English is shaky. Is she saying my head can fly or something? Whatever. I may not know what it means, but I do know this. My assistant is making fun of me. But that doesn't matter right now. Christina, Christina did you send two mails? Uh, no, I only sent one. Mayushi saw it too. She really only sent one. But I received two. You're right, I even sent it in one sentence. But it got divided. By the way, what does that word, this word mean? Why don't you look it up? I guess she doesn't want to answer. That reminds me, the D-mail from before was cut up mid-sentence, too. Was it? Yeah, look at your history. I'm pretty sure I sent Okarin's a perv. Okay. 
You're right. This one got split too. I don't know what that means. I wonder what's causing it. Hmm. Maybe it's related to the Jellymen. Um, Mayushi wants to know why it arrived five days ago. Good point. Didn't the last one also arrive five days before we sent it? Hmm. Does it have to do something with how long we program the time frame? Because we programmed it for... What is it? 120 seconds? 120 seconds divided by 5 is 24 24 hours a day so we programmed the microwave to be like we, we we programmed it within within the hours is that it is there some kind of rule for when it arrives Let's try sending more! Mayuri's right. Now that we've figured out how to send emails, we should keep experimenting and collect as much data as we can. But, so why does- why was it able to only work during certain hours of the day? I'm- I'm pretty sure I've got- I've nailed that 120 thing. But why would it only work between certain hours? Hmm. That one I don't know. All right, Lab Mems, battle stations. He's at it again. We are going to break a hole in this floor. Our mission to send as many emails as possible. I feel like we need to find a way to displace the weight across a larger surface area. Um, Daru, man the X68000. Your job is to observe, adjust, and gather information on the phone wave. Name subject to change. <laughs> Assistant, keep those mails coming. Try various patterns of text. Japanese, English, full width, half width, emoticons. The actual messages don't matter. I'm sure Shining Finger would be better for the job, but since she's not a lab mem, I leave it to Kurisu. What about Mayushi? Your mission is to go shopping. Just buy some bananas for now. I, Hyo, and Kyoma shall fund you. Wow, you're so generous. So I guess your job will be opening the microwave. Whoa, you saved the easiest job for yourself. <laughs> no, my assistant's judgment is sound. The key to a successful D mail is most likely the correct timing of opening the microwave door. <sighs> I was just kidding. <laughs> Leave this task to Hyomi Kyoma! I shall open this door with precision, boldness, and delicacy, as if it were the flesh of a beautiful woman. 
Furthermore, the current operation is top secret. You must not leak it to anyone, got it? Mary nods, the others are ignoring me. Now, I shall give this operation a name. It shall be known as Op. Don't need one. Let's start. <laughs> what? But. You ruined my climatic scene. Damn you, assistant. This is an outrage. Alright, this seems like a good place to stop. Um, we're finally figuring out things about the time machine. Uh, I just found out a new word that I need to look at, but we'll save that for the next episode. Um, thank you guys so much for coming and enjoying this episode of Steins Gate. I hope you guys are enjoying the series. I am. I'm really looking forward to beating this thing. So I will probably be recording another episode real soon. I'll see you guys then. Bye-bye!